Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to my channel where I talk about all the geeky pop culture that I like and consume. Things like Doctor Who, things like the MCU and things like Star Trek. We are nearing the end now, I think, of Star Trek Discovery Season 4. Episode... Wait, what episode is it? Te 9? 10? Something like that? Maybe even 11. I've lost completely lost track. It's called Rosetta anyway. And that is what I'm going to be reviewing today. There will be spoilers. So... Go watch the episode first. I'm going to say straight off that I kind of felt this was a bit of a filler episode. I know people were saying that about last week as well with the whole preparing to go in through the galactic barrier stuff kind of felt like they were just kind of treading time. This kind of feels a bit more like that. I actually felt it... It bothered me less. I, I did recognise it last time, but it bothered me less last time. I quite liked what we got from it. This time, I'm... Um, eh, yeah. It's all right, I guess. It's not. It's not terrible. It's a solid enough plot for an episode. Beam down to a planet, encounter some weird alien dust, which gives you weird visions, and kind of empathy carrying dust is a or emotion carrying dust is a very Star Trek like idea, and I think that could work for an episode. I don't know if it was. Ex I don't know if it was expanded enough. It was kind of so wrapped into everything else that was going on with the 10C plot that it could have been a really good idea by itself, but I'm not sure it quite worked. I don't know. It did have some interesting bits in there, though, but it does still feel like they're just trying to pad out the time until they actually encounter the 10C. I'm really hoping that next week we will actually encounter them and... Something will happen, obviously, that is interesting to watch because, and not kind of really, I don't know, the, the Star Trek Discovery has a bad track record for hyping up stuff and building up stuff and then the finale being a little bit disappointing and I'm really hoping it doesn't do that. Now, I was worried about the st that at the start. It, it The last, you know, half of the season that we've had has hooked me in a lot more and I've been getting more interested in it so I'm, I am excited to see where it goes especially the fact that it's now outside of the universe what does this mean so far I mean they even say it you know the laws of gravity the laws of gravity the laws you know physics the laws of physics are working the same pretty much and aye, if you're gonna go outside of the galaxy do something interesting with it when the Enterprise in Star Trek The Next Generation got transported to a different galaxy. The laws of physics were completely not the same. That was the M something number something galaxy. And all sorts of trippy stuff went down. Now, it doesn't need to be that extreme, but maybe everything kind of is just like, oh, it's almost as if they're just in a bit of a different bit of the galaxy. They just had to go through a barrier to get there. I'd like to see things a bit more different. And I'm hoping we will when we encounter the 10C and they're going to be a very hopefully very different species but at the moment they're not giving us anything different having been through this I suppose apart from a bit of dust which they hadn't encountered before. I am of course referring to the plot where Burnham, Kolba, Saru and Detma all go down to this planet they found which they think is possibly the Tennessee's original home planet that some kind of disaster might have happened there before they left and they want to go down there, or Burnham specifically wants to go down there, to try and find some kind of clue and how they can communicate. It's not a bad plan. It makes sense, although they are on a time limit. So there's this weighing up and there's this discussions between the various delegates, the uh, president of the Federation, the Navaran person, the person from the Earth, uh, United Earth. They all have their views on this and whether or not they should be carrying on straight to the 10C to try and make contact or whether or not st stopping is worthwhile. But Burnham makes the decision that they, they should do this and it's worth the risk of losing some time. And as a Xeno, what was it she is? Xeno, Xeno anthropologist, I think she is, something like that. She, that's, that's her wheelhouse as well, so it makes sense. Uh... And when they get down there, they find some old bones, which we think of the 10 C, I I guess. Um, and more specifically, they find this weird blue dust, which initially we don't know is the cause. But Saru initially is the first one uh, to get infected by this stuff and starts 
feeling intense fear. Now, this is one area I did quite like about the episode because it harkens back to Saru's pre pre uh, I can't remember what it was called what that he went through that kind of because uh, he used to be <sighs> sense danger and be uh, innate sort of biological fear that his species had until they went through this process which they're the ba bakula or baku no bakula that's scott bakula not scott bakula um the, the, whatever that species were that hunted them stopped them ever going through so they kind of lived in perpetual fear and he had those threat ganglias which dropped off but this kind of harkens back to that and and it does it was quite interesting seeing him because he'd become so brave since the those had disappeared he's he's now this outgoing brave person that doesn't really feel fear and for him to have to feel that again that really kind of shook him a little bit because he he'd thought he'd gone past that and that he didn't wouldn't have to feel those kind of emotions again so to see him grapple with that was interesting and initially i just thought it was something that it was going to affect him specifically because of his background but no it does also affect first colba and then the captain and by the fact that it hasn't affected detma yet and she's the only one that hasn't come into contact with the dust they work out it's the dust and it's kind of it's uh, it's dust that carries memories slash emotions of events that happened around where they encounter the dust so when they encounter it outside it's full of fear because they that's where the planet was going to hell and people were dying the tensi were dying when they come into the building and it's they figure out it's a kind of nursery where there were children were kept the kind of feelings they get is one of love and belonging and compassion and that's what Burnham wants to use in communicating with them that they are a species that do have empathy somewhat and uh, and hopes to use that uh, and just generally emotions in generally to communicate with them we do get another bridge crew exposition of the week from Tetma here although it is admittedly a little bit more integrated into the plot than some of them have been where the bridge crew just randomly pop out a bit about their backstory to to fill in for us um but because they're having these emotions about family about children etc there's a lot it triggers a lot of memories about parental figures in the crew when they when they encounter the dust in this nursery and Detma has this uh, clearly troubled childhood with her father and her, her father sounds like her father maybe went through maybe some depression or something like that and she talks about feeling his pain you know even when he wasn't like in the same room as her he could she could kind of sense that something was wrong with him um and and all that so it, it still was the exposition dump about backstory of the bridge crew just thrown in there it kind of made sense a bit with the plot more than some of them have and it wasn't as egregious but it is another case of that happening again the other plot line is booker and tarka are still i got tarka's name wrong so so badly last review i can't remember what i called him but i was getting his name wrong throughout the entire review sorry about that but he uh, is they are they want to get into the same thing that discovery with them where they think the 10c is but to do that they want to piggyback on literally latch on to discovery to hitch a ride and to do that without being picked up on sensors they need to board discovery and alter some systems around so that um zora doesn't pick them up and and discover that they're there so that's a whole uh sort of again it's it's nothing particularly interesting until right at the end they go on they fiddle with some systems they kind of also booker recruits the earth the United Earth ambassador person into their little scheme slightly, although she's only half in. She says, like, your plan can be a plan of last resort, but we're not going to, uh, we're not going to, you know, focus on it. We're going to try the diplomacy first, and only if that fails do you initiate this plan. So there's all of that sort of stuff going on. Uh, on the ship as well, we've got um, Tignataro's character, Jet Reno, that's that's the character's name, isn't it? And uh, she's having a conversation with Adira, kind of giving them a bit of a pep talk, I guess, about... Well, Adira is 
admiring Detmer for her Detmer's conf- confidence um, and just, you know, just knowing that she can do the job, Detmer can do the job. Whereas Adira is very self-conscious, very self-doubting. Feels like now filling in the Tilly role a bit because Tilly has left, of course. That was kind of Tilly's character in season one, especially that she was always the kind of like, oh, I want to do really well, but I'm you know doubting my I have no self-confidence that kind of thing that's been that was kind of her journey it's I don't know if we're just going to replicate that now with Adira I hope they do something different with it but we'll see by the end of the episode they make friends with Detmer in a kind of like because to the conversation with Tig is that they they want to be Detmer and Tig very rightly points out that don't start the conversation with Detmer like that it's kind of creepy so that was a nice bit. I like that. And it's always good to see Tig Nataro on there. Um, but by the end of the episode, Tig has discovered Tarka fiddling with stuff um, in engineering and gets kidnapped by them. So we get this reveal at the end where Booker comes back on board. He's talking to Tarka and he's like, um, yeah, kidnapped her. And her, she's there in her very typical sort of blase style going hey bet you didn't come expect to come back to a hostage i do like her character she's really funny um just like completely different to every other character in in the show so in this episode there were things like there were things i did like i did like uh the what they did how they used the dust with saru particularly and uh the tig stuff as well the conversation with adira was interesting i'm i'm looking up willing to see where it goes but we'll see the plot itself it was okay i guess it does kind of just feel like they're ticking over and kind of trying to fill those episode count up but we'll see what happens next episode and how much of what they learnt here comes into play um let me know what you think of this episode in the comments down below i have got to send i am now sending my laptop off to repair tomorrow so i don't know if I, what i'm going to do next week if i'm going to be able to um review it or not similarly with star trek picard which also starts today i haven't watched that yet i'm not going to do weekly reviews of star trek picard because i'm reviewing what i want to do with weekly reviews anyway whether or not i want to continue them in the same way as i am but also because my laptop's going off it just didn't see the point in starting a whole new series of weekly reviews so but what i am doing is talking tonight on my live stream i do a monthly pop culture live stream where i talk about all sorts of pop culture star trek doctor who i'm going to be talking about peacemaker tonight as well if you're a fan of that show uh, the dc comic show i'm going to be talking about all of that tonight on the live stream at 8 30 gmt so uh wherever you are in the world <laughs> work that out but uh please do join us to talk about and i will be talking about star trek picard there thank you for watching i'll hopefully see you soon goodbye <laughs>